What's up guys and welcome back to another video. We're talking about Maytag dryers again in this one. This one's going to be about not heating. If your dryer is not heating up at all, not getting slightly warm, it's just cool inside, this is the video for you. There's three main reasons. We're going to go over all three today. Heating element, fuse before the heating element, and improper power. All right, before we get started, be sure to unplug the dryer because we don't want to die. Let's hit that intro. All right, so to start with, I'm gonna turn this thing around. Let's talk about power. If it's only getting half power, it will not heat. The motor in dryers is a 110 motor, heating element's usually 220. So if it's getting one leg hot and the other leg not, the motor's gonna run and the heat element will not and you'll be tearing apart the entire dryer and the entire problem could just be a bad plug or a bad plug at the wall or your uh, breaker is messed up. So to check these things, I'm not gonna go into super detail on how to use a tester. If you don't know how to use a tester, check out a video on the particular type of tester you have to check for power. We wanna check for 110 and 220. So real quick, with it plugged in, so be very careful if you don't feel comfortable with this, get someone else to do it for you that's a professional. The center one should be your neutral or ground. You're gonna to check to the outside, and that should be 110. Check to the other side, and that should be 110. And if you check the two outsides, those should be your 220. If you are not receiving that, and you te test both of these, and it is 110, bing, 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 here's your problem. Now we gotta figure out where the problem is. I have seen that these screws will be loose, and a loose screw, a loose connection will become a hot connection. It will melt the wire from there up and you'll just won't have a connection right there. You'll have to replace this uh, terminal block and I will put a uh, link below for the terminal blocks of these. They're fairly common terminal blocks, not a super hard project, but that will have to be replaced. You'll wonder, you'll think a power surge or something happened. Usually it'll be these screws. Someone put the wrong one in it because these threads are fine and all these other screws that look similar to it are very coarse threads and it won't tighten. You'll think it's tightened, but it'll actually be loose. All right, the next spot would be the plug where it plugs in. Whether it's a three prong or a four prong, where it plugs in your house, you'll go ahead and turn your breaker off and check to see if it's burned up there. I've seen several times where I did a delivery, the dryer would not come on and you'll pull the plug cover off and boom, there it is, it's a melted plug and they'll have to have that replaced. And again, if you don't feel comfortable, hire someone, hire an electrician to replace that for you. This is 220, it's very dangerous. The next spot, and I actually have seen this a pretty fair amount in double wides, uh, trailers, single wides as well. Uh, they'll use cheap breakers, and a double pole breaker is 220, so there's two together, and it will half trip, meaning that only one side will trip and the other side didn't quite trip with it, so it'll still be on and it'll be giving the dryer half power, making only the motor come on and not the heating element. And all you have to do is turn that breaker off, turn the breaker back on, and it's probably gonna be good. Maybe it's a one-time occurrence. Maybe you'll wanna replace the breaker. It really depends on what it looks like. And again, I'm not a professional. I don't recommend doing any of this if you don't feel comfortable. All right, so that that's all the power side of it. Let's go ahead to flip it back around and work on what else it could be, including the heating element in the fuse. All right, so again, we're gonna go into the machine now, so definitely want it unplugged. And the tools you'll need are either, you can do a drill with a 5 16th driver, and if you pull the end off a regular bit, that's a quarter inch, and we'll be able to use that later. Or if you'd rather, you can use a quarter nut driver, a quarter 5 16th. Other tools we'll need, is something flat to push with. You can use a putty knife or anything that has a nice sharp skinny edge. If you use a wide screwdriver, it may chip your paint because we're gonna use this to open up the dryer with. And something to hook it with. Either, I love these little tools. These are sold at Harbor Freight. They're called a key pick tool or something like that. But you could also use a very thin, uh, small flathead screwdriver to do it with as well. All right, let's get started. So we're gonna take our flat tool and we're gonna push on this side closer to the door. If you push over here, there's a little peg that will be in your way and it's not gonna help you open it. You wanna push more on this side, give a little bit of a shove. 
lift up. And now open the door just slightly, or that far. Do the same thing on this side, lift up, and now the door open. And if you have it the right amount of distance from the wall, you can actually take this and lean it against the wall. Super handy. And now we're ready to take this front piece off. And we're going to do that by taking off two screws, five sixteenths right here, a five sixteenths right here. And there's also the plug that we'll go ahead and do right now. Then we're gonna use our little either sharp uh, flathead or this little pick tool. All right, from there, we'll take our 5 sixteenths nut driver. And we'll do the same thing on this side. And careful not to drop them. They're always a pain to find, but when you're putting it back together, really be careful. You have to take it back apart to get to them. All right, from right here, there's two hooks and two square holes, and you, all you have to do is lift up and it'll come off of those square holes. Now let's take a look at what I'm talking about. The square holes are right here, and one on the opposite side, and the hooks are right here. All right, now we're gonna take this and lean it against the wall. All right, so now we're gonna take this plug off, same little tool, it's exactly the same type of plug. Slip that in there, and it's done. All right, from here, there's four screws holding this piece in. Go ahead and take the filter out and undo the two bottom screws, and then just loosen the two top screws. You'll see that they have a keyhole keeper so you can easily take this thing on and off. So I'm just going to loosen these up and not take them out all the way. All right, before I take that off, we're going to go ahead and take all four of these. All right, and we got that guy off. A lot of times this will be really blocked up with lint and it'll be lint all up in here. I have an entire video on how to unstop every single spot in this dryer with lint and a lot of times this will be your actual problem why the heat element went out and why the thermal fuse went out and additional problems a machine will have it will be just stopped up with lint so check out that video and from here we already got this loose we got these plugs are undone we're just going to lift up a little bit to get out of those keyholes and let it go down some and you'll see it'll be hooked on the bottom of this drum on this ring and the hook is these guys, the rollers. Double check your rollers. They shouldn't be covered in hair. They should easily turn. If they don't, clean them. You may have to replace them if they're messed up. Let's stick this guy to the side. All right. This is always the hard part to record, but there's a trick to this type of machine. You can take the drum, lift it up, and sit it down like that. And now we can easily get to the belt to undo it. To hook the belt back up, it's very difficult to do this backwards and it's very difficult to reach through this little hole, but it can be done if you don't wanna go through the back of the machine. But in this particular machine, there's an access hole to the belt and you can easily get to it from the back side. You can just open up that access hole and rehook the belt or unhook the belt if you don't feel comfortable doing it this way. But from here, we're just unhooking the belt from the idler pull. All right, now the belt is loose. I'm gonna lift it up, remove it, and set it off to the side. Okay, from right here, we're back to playing with the tester. And again, watch a couple videos on exactly how to use a tester. It's like this, it means open. That means it's a good connection. So basically, it's sending a signal from one side, and the other side's listening. If it hears a signal, it tells you a beep, or it tells you by whatever type of signal your particular meter says. So we're going to test the heating element itself by checking these red wires. And it's going to be really easy to check. This machine is working, so it should be fine. I'm going to put a tester on one side, and obviously this is an unplugged machine. 
and a tester on the other and we'll listen for the beep. That means it's good. It can hear the signal between it. So this heating element is wired all through here. It looks like a spring that runs back and forth and it's not broken. That's what we're testing for. The next one back is the thermostat. This tells it when to come on and off. Right now it should be asking it to come on because it's very cool and it's not overheating. So this should be open as well. And it is. All right, the next one back is a uh, thermal fuse. This guy goes out one time and then it will not come back. And you'll test it by the same way. And it's good to go. This does not beep and it has gone out. Don't just replace it. Uh, this usually will be a symptom of the dryer can't breathe well enough, meaning there's too much lint in it or the pipe behind the machine is bent. This is a symptom of the problem. If you just replace that and throw everything back together, it's probably gonna pop that or it could be a dryer fire. Very common problem with dryers is they're the one, that, one of the most common things to catch on fire in a house. So don't just fix the symptom, make sure you're fixing the problem. All right, but let's say the this guy is super easy to replace, so all you'd have to do is look look this guy up, and I'll, I'll put a video in the description of how exactly to look up every single part in your dryer to make sure you're getting the right one. Check out that video, and we'll undo this, order a new one, clean out the dryer, find where it was stopped up. If this guy's messed up, this is very rare. These don't mess up very often, but that does happen. Uh, sometimes they'll, they won't trip the right times, and it'll just overheat. If this is messed up, that is a little bit harder to fix, but we're gonna go over it now. You're gonna to have to replace the heating element. Now again, that's good, but another thing to check is check one side of the wire to the frame, check the other side of the wire to the frame. What would happen is the heating element will snap and weld itself to the frame of the heating element box and it will appear that the heat element is working, but it actually is not. So make sure you check that as well. But let's go ahead and take this guy apart. All right, to take this heat element out, it is sandwiched in between all these parts and you're gonna have to take the screws out for these guys. And I, I would go ahead and take these two wires off and then just undo the screws for these guys. Easiest way to do that is to start with taking these two wires off. Remember the one with the white stripe where it goes and where the other one goes, just so you always have it in exactly the same spot. All right, that's all the wires I would undo. I don't like undoing these push-on connections very much because they will wear out or you can snap one of these little ears off and then it's a nightmare. So I like to leave all these connections on and just undo these quarter inch screws uh, but to get to those, you have to undo this 5 16 And what's a pain about it is you're not going to be able to reach it with a regular drill unless you have a little angle attachment. So if you don't have an angle attachment, little trick, take your 5 16 socket or a socket driver, just a nut driver, and you can put it on there. Put it on there if you already have one on your drill, and then just take some pliers and loosen it up. After it loosens up, you can easily just undo it. All right, and that guy's out. And that's the main part to take this thing out. It's gonna be hooked right here with a little keeper. We're gonna, just gonna lift it up some. See how that little keeper is right here? And that will fall off too, be careful with it. When you go back, you gotta put that in first and let it go down. Now lay this a little bit on its side and let's go ahead and take these quarter inch screws out now that we can easily reach them. take this out and work on it outside the machine. So from here, we're gonna flip it upside down and you'll see there's four more quarter inch screws that are holding it together. Let's take those out. All right, from here, we're just gonna lift this up. Boom, there it is. And you can see this one is getting developing cracks, not quite broken all the way. This is how a heat element usually will burn up. It will overheat from being stopped up. And this machine originally was stopped up. That's originally its first problem it had. 
and the heat and elbow will overheat, it'll bend, it'll crack, it'll start touching this wire, and that will either ground out, that's why we were testing for that earlier to see if it was still hot against the frame, or it'll just pop the heat and element, and it'll be broken somewhere on the heat and element. It's fairly easy, if you, even if you don't want to, if you don't have a tester and you wanted to go this far and you had no tester, you could just look for a break somewhere in this wire, just slowly touch it, and then you can take this up and check the other side and look for a break somewhere in the wire or a spot where it's touching the frame. This one's not touching. All right, guys, so now let's go the opposite way. Normally, you would replace this. So you'd order another heating element. Check out the links down below. And we're going to put a new heating element back in it, but I'm just going to stick this guy right back in there. Just like that. This guy goes back on top. Just like that. All right, before we go any further, I always like to double check this. Make sure it's not touching the frame anywhere. So turn your tester back on. Still good. Not touching the frame on that side. Not touching the frame. If it were to beep, we know we had made a mistake. All right. Let's put this guy back in there. And remember, we got this hook on this side, and this hook goes up in that hole first. So we got to kind of scoop it up into it. And this is a good time if this is covered in lint. Check out that other video while we're this far in and clean out not only the lint that you can see here, but the lint that's in this fan box. I have a video on taking this guy apart real easy and um, clean all the lint from the blade as well. But if you've already done all that, hook this guy. Kind of give it a little slidey slide. And you'll know you're in the right spot. It will be slightly angled. All right, just like so. All right, back to the hardest one, which is this guy. And if you have the right tool, you can do this real quickly. I'm not in my shop and I don't have the right tool. So I'm not going to do this quickly. All right, from here, we said in my particular dryer, the white one was on top. Stab it back on, make sure it's not loose. Stab it back on, make sure it's not loose. And if it is super, super loose, take it back off and you can kind of be careful because if they break, they break, you have to replace this. You can kind of give it a little bit of a squeeze and then it will hold on to that stab on a little bit better. All right, so we're ready to get the rest of it together. Let's put the drum back in. All right, take the belt, put it right back to where you'll see there's a mark on the drum where it's been sitting forever. Put it right back there, give it a little bit of a turn so you know it's good and in place, and just lay the drum slightly forward. And I like to go ahead and use that easy access port on the back side to hook it back up to, but you could wedge your hands through here and if you're really really good you can uh, you can hook that back up without having to take it off i think it's a lot of trouble i'd rather just pop the back end off and you can also check the idler pulley sometimes they go bad and give them a little bit of uh, white lithium grease and oil them up and check them while you're already there you might as well check the entire machine while you're here so let's put the front cover on and the front cover has these two rollers and they hook in this groove right here and it's always a little difficult to get on. But remember we left these two screws just kind of loose right here and here. So it's going to make it a little bit easier. We just got to get that hooked and we got to get these hooked. There we go. Alright, now just do these five sixteenths real quick. Get 
Be sure to tighten these guys back up. Don't leave them loose. All right, we're right here. Plug this guy back in, make sure it's good and secure. That is the auto dry sensor, and it's basically two metal bars that senses when wet clothes are touching between the bars. It's just checking for that. If you forget to do that, it's probably gonna act funny. It's either gonna assume it's dried too quickly or not dried at all, or throw some kind of error code depending on what machine you have. Either way, if it's doing something new, you probably forgot this plug or you forgot this plug if it's doing a new problem that it was not doing before. All right, from right here, we're gonna put the front cover on. And again, we got square hole, square hole, a hook, a hook. I always like to do the right side first because I'm right handed. All right, from right here, this is the spot that you do not, and while we're up here, go ahead and let's plug this in so we don't make a mistake. You do not want to drop this screw right now. I've done this many times, including on, on camera. Don't drop a screw because you have to go back down and get it unless you have a pile of these screws somewhere. Same thing with this guy. Start it by hand. All right, lift this guy down. Open the door just slightly. Close it up. Oop. Filter back in, and we're done. Uh, now we all we have to do is hook up the belt. So I'm going to turn around, show you a little easy access way to hook up the belt, and we are done. All right, with that guy off, now we're going to unhook or hook back up this belt. Uh, sometimes these machines will be a smaller access hole. It's on some of the older models that you can just reach from right here. It's much easier. You don't have to take off the entire swing. We're going to take the belt, go around the pulley. I'm going to take my other hand, I'll push the pulley back, and I'll hook the belt. And we're done. All right, guys, that's it. Again, this is one of the harder things to do to this particular dryer is replacing the heating element and checking that thermal fuse because you had to break down so deep into it to get to that. Um, you might be able to check that thermal fuse by opening up the back end, but more than likely you had to open up the front end anyway to clean out the dryer. So you kind of, if, you, if it's a thermal fuse, you're probably going to have to fix the actual problem, not just a symptom of the thermal fuse. But please like, please subscribe. We'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching guys and please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Also, if you're looking for that video I was talking about where you can find the exact right part for a great price, it's the one on the left of the screen. And the one on the right of the screen is a playlist of every repair video I've ever done for this appliance. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see y'all next time.